tries his very best to get the most out of his game. He practices hard. He's clearly dedicated, determined. But also, I don't think he's frightened. I think he genuinely believes that in years to come, he will be at the top of this game. Yeah, like I said, he spent a lot of time in America playing many different disciplines. And what I like is he just really... I say this a lot, gets it very involved in himself, which is a big part of playing championship pool. Now he's hit the first few shots very well. Another tough one. We'll see if he wants to float this or maybe go four rails. Oh, he's hit that thick. And he, you know, he carries a little bit bigger pause than I remember in the back of the swing. And for me, you know, I'm not a big proponent of it, but especially on soft spin shots, it seems like that's where the pause in the back can carry some difficulty. I just wonder whether it's going to be history repeating itself because a big part of Loho Sum's success in Gibraltar, he played two matches where his opponent was well below what they normally are. His first match against Dennis Grabber, between them, they missed... 17 pots in a race to seven. And then, of course, the quarterfinal against Abdullah Al Yusuf. That was also crammed with errors. Yeah, and it was a night and day kind of tournament for Loho. <coughs> excuse me, Loho Sum. He played some really exceptional matches uh, between defeating the current world champion, seven to six, that being Shane Van Boning, and played a very solid match. And then played a really solid match in the final overall, considering the moment and considering his opponent. Absolutely agree. And of course, against Mieszka Fortunski in the semi final, he was also pretty impressive. That's right, because Fortunski kind of went about business that week and uh, really didn't make many mistakes, looked as comfortable as any player in the event, in my opinion, anyways. These are races to nine. It's like Phil said, the second round of the winter side, these guys are trying to get to that final 16 and still a long road to go. There's no doubt about it. Jeremy hit the nail on the head. Loho Sum is getting used to being out there center stage and he has taken the, the opening rack. Yeah, and I'll tell you one thing he did, not only the Whirlpool Masters, but also with that little run he made at the Whirlpool Championships, which really kind of got him going, I think, here in 2022. But as he put some break and runs together behind some mistakes, and that makes up a that makes up for a lot of a lot of little errors, especially in a lot of our winter break format tournaments. Of course, to be here, both of these two have played one match. It was yesterday. And it was quite contrasting, actually, in terms of scoreline. Loho Sum defeated Kinga Rayuk, the female player from Poland, 9-0. It was a much tougher task for Mickey Kraus. He overcame Saulius Vytukartis. I hope I've got that right, 9-7. Yeah, and I was thinking about that, probably... You know, Loho Sum got a lot more time at the table in his match, you might say. Uh, winning nine racks to zero over that young lady, but didn't that do Mickey, you know, having a close match there early, nothing wrong with that, and having a win behind it. Okay, the two ball's gonna dress up on the side rail, and he's gonna be snookered, so a difficult rollout. They're always difficult at this level. was Solius Vitukaitis. That's the, the correct pronunciation of Mickey Krause's victim in the opening round. Well, that's all you feel. I hate to probably roll out to a cut shot here, to an offensive shot. I'd like to probably roll out to a very off-angle bank shot. Probably not going to get it back. There's going to be a safety played by his opponent, most likely. But, 
you know, you think maybe after a miss on the six ball in the opening game by Mickey that you may roll out offensively, but a lot of players want to make up for that miss, and they're definitely not going to give you an offensive shot back. So I probably roll out by the side pocket over here on the left side. Like I said, leaving a very off angle bank if they want to go offensive, but I doubt I challenge them here. Because it doesn't take much for position. It's just making the two and coming across the table. So, and the problem with this is I hate to roll out where I'm never getting it back. That's the one thing about the rollout you really want to stay away from. And you can say, and I think pretty accurately feel that no one in the field's giving this back. Yeah, I mean, the only time in this tournament you can feel absolutely confident you've done the right thing with a push-out is if you're a, a pool player who's playing a snooker player, you can push to a jump because you know they can't pull that shot off. Well, that's a pretty bad miss there, and it can work against you as well, but I think Mickey was supposed to attack there. Now, this has gotten a little funny. I don't think, I'm not sure he can cut this in, and it, it's really odd as far as the cross corner bank. I don't think he can really move the rock a lot if he decides to bank it. It just kind of slides up the side rail, and I don't know if that offers position. Oh, he over twisted the bank, and this is going to get Mickey a little easier starter. A little funny cueing over the three ball and a little distance away, but. One of those situations, Jeremy, where Krause's bad shot initially on the two has worked in his favor. Yeah, and he's got to make a, a good commitment with the stroke here. Probably just goes with a bit of inside English. Maybe catches the nine coming up the table. We'll see. Oh, he went with outside, so a bit of struggle earlier, early here for Mickey. It really is a small sample size, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but first impressions for me, he looks nervous. Yeah, well, he made a lot of great openers in the first rack to miss that six ball, which was missable. It was thin, required a ton of side spin. And this little jump shot here with the nine so far away, very dangerous shot. Yeah, because you just know if you put a lot into it, the cue ball's probably going off the table or following the two in the corner pocket so so now Mickey which I always talk about nothing will make you forget about those mistakes more than ball in hand okay interesting little path he's looking at here he's just got to pay attention coming a couple rails with the four and five going to be kind of in the mix Now with the six ball there and landing near the cushion, this this little chip shot has gotten a little funny. This is where knowing the slick table means a lot. How do I escape this corner and get out for this pink four without really risking much? Wouldn't be surprised if he ends up short. Well, that was a better stroke. I know he's going to be and he's going to be all right. thing I when I talk to Mickey back in the States I get the feeling that for a young man that it's very hard for some of the young players especially as talented as they are to recognize that it's a process in this professional career for most not all of them are going to be like Josh Filler and just hit the scene winning world titles and US Opens it's going to be a few like that at times but for most it's going to be a grind Yes, more incremental improvements rather than a meteoric rise, as with Filler, who is exceptional. Yeah, and exceptional starts, that word starts with the word, you know, an exception, right? That's kind of what you feel with some of those guys like Filler and 
He's lost the cue ball, so he's going to have a bit of a tester on the nine after a few mistakes early. So long nine ball into the corner could really settle him. Everyone caught a lot of that side rail. That's one of those heart in mouth shots. It really is. Mickey Krause, though, he was a little fortunate on that two ball, especially when he missed it initially and didn't leave it easy. But he is back on level terms at one rack each. Now, I was saying during the opener, Jeremy, that we had 33 players eliminated yesterday. I think the, the most prominent of them would be the, the Belgian World Cup of Pool player, Kevin Lenoy. But it was almost Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, wasn't it? You did that match last night. He was 6 0 down and came back to win 9 8. He must be so relieved because had he, the Spaniard, gone out on day one, that would have been a, a monumental upset. Absolutely. And really, you could say he probably got outplayed in that match. Uh, pretty unfortunate scratch at 6 to 0. Um, they kind of got the ball rolling for Ruiz. And one thing about Ruiz, he's played a lot of big tournaments. You know, he probably lost and, of course, lost to a, a player. He was a, a pretty big favorite in the first round. But he understands that it's a grind and just getting back to that single elimination one way or another, that's the key. So I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a deep run after a serious threat yesterday. He seems to me. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz to be the ultimate confidence monster. If he's got a lot of confidence, he's phenomenal. If he hasn't, he's vulnerable. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he's still young and, and uh, 30 years old. He's he's another one, David, and him both are like the epitome of, of players that, that have gone through the ranks and really earned their position as some of the world's best. All right, his two ball's going to dress up for a little bank shot. Yeah, so finally, the footnote to that discussion as we concentrate on this rack. Well done to Ashik Nathwani from India, who pressed Francisco Sanchez Ruiz so well, came so close to winning. All right, he should attack here. This is where you want to play the cue ball nice. You don't want to make this bank without position. It's going to get a little bump, and it should be okay. That last nine ball to me kind of looked like, like maybe he just went with what he saw, maybe didn't focus quite so much after a couple of mistakes, and maybe I'm hoping he regroups here in rack number three. He's got all the tools, big stroke, a lot of power. Another one of those very athletic builds, long, takes advantage of it. Oh, it's a six ball again, and just the timing off a bit, and really a bad miss there. Table playing pretty friendly still early. If you miss a ball like that, you've missed your mark by, by quite some piece. He will be shaken, not just by that mistake, but by the ones that preceded it. And Loho Sum now looking to do exactly what he did in the opening rack, which is pick up the pieces. He didn't play for that into the side. No way. Can't blame the play, though, making sure he gets some draw on the ball. I mean, you want to be in a little more control it for sure, but uh, easy to let up and the cue ball just not go anywhere at all and leave a tester on the seven. With the eight kind of hanging, not, not terrible to go ahead and put some draw into that shot. And on 
table number two, I think uh, Naive Pioi is going to have his hands full here early on day two. Yes, he's playing the Polish player, Marius Skonekti. As he did in the opening rack, Loho Sum taking advantage of Mickey Krause's mistake on the six. Loho Sum back in front at 2-1. You get the impression this is not going to be one of those ding-dong battles that will move one way and then the next. Yeah, and for, for most of the players on the winner's side, really, we saw what happened yesterday on the score lines. Of course, some of the outer tables had some closer matches, but for the top seeds, you might say, the tournament really starts today. It's one of those situations in the tournament where we've got two different rounds going on. We've got the winner's side round, which we're watching right here, and we've also got the, the loser's round as well, where players, if they are beaten, I'm afraid, exit the event. They've been playing here since 9 o'clock this morning. I can tell you Manuel Gamma from Portugal has just beaten John Chapman 9-1, so Chapman departs. And Kinga Ryuk, who we've been talking about, who Loho um, whitewashed in the first round, she's doing a lot better today. She's 7-1 up against Saulius Vaitu Cartis. Yeah, I spoke with a young lady last night and she just said she was incredibly nervous. Of course, didn't play her game and watched some of that. She didn't, she got some opportunities, but, but looking to play a lot better today and Loho some to break the fourth rack. Nice kiss on the cue ball. The cue ball was going to fall down to the bottom rail, and now he's just inches away from a, a great starter on the one. A little bit of position he's got to play for the two, seeing as how it's on the bottom rail a little bit, but very shootable from a lot of places. We saw Loho some spend a lot of time, of course, with Kelly Fisher at the Whirlpool Masters. And I think probably mentally she's helped him, I'm sure. But definitely, I think physically, his technique, I think, has improved. Yeah, he said on a, a very lengthy Instagram post after winning the, the World Masters that Kelly Fisher's helped greatly. And, of course, she's still in each corner here. Yeah, and he... Uh, I'm sure is in her as she's competing as well, and she did win her first round. All right, it's all about the speed here. The angle on the four should be pretty easy to get on the five. Yeah, this looks like a pretty good cue ball there. It's going to get a little flat. Should be okay, though. type of shot if you overhit it really the cue ball doesn't want to move as much so nice medium stroke here I really used all that pocket that's why I got so far out with the cue ball probably didn't want to hit the four that wide but it's a nice position now Loho some looks pretty calm early. Like I said, at those tournaments, the World Pool Championships and the World Pool Masters, of course, he made some mistakes. Some matches, you kind of wonder how he got by, right? With a lot of help from his opponent. But then he also put a lot of break and runs together, which is going to be key again this week. So 
see it in golf a lot, especially in the match play events where guys don't play their best golf. They win two and one, one up. Then as the tournament lengthens, they start to play better and better. Well, that's the thing with any confrontational sport, isn't it? When you go head to head, all you've got to do is play better than the the opponent. And that's what Loho Sum did in Gibraltar. And indeed, that's what he's doing here. That was much better stuff from him. He leads Mickey Kraus by three racks to one. Yeah, very nice stroke on the nine ball. And one thing Loho Sum knows, though, and we know as well, playing better than those opponents just gets harder and harder as the event goes. It's pretty tough at the moment for poor old Naoki Oi. The, the smile has been wiped from his face temporarily over on table two. He finds himself 4-1 down to Marius Skonecki from Poland. And he's a fine player. So Oi, as Jeremy said, has got his hands full. Yeah, and, you know, he's kind of turned the corner in some, in some ways, that being Naoki Oi's got expectations I think a little bit more now after an incredible year last year and really an incredible couple years so a bit more serious at times and maybe a transition mentally this is Konecki Poland has so many wonderful players at the moment we're going to see one a little later on on the, the main match table Daniel Massillon and Viktor Zelinski has been taking the pool world by storm in 2022. Yeah, it's how many and how often for the Polish players, it seems like. That's the break he's looking for. Look at the one track. He's always got to contend with balls coming over to that side, but it appears he came away with a shot and a pretty good one on the one easy position on the two. I think the three went down. No, the three's up as well. So looks like the one ball coming across, getting on the two is really the shot of the rack. Most of these players, once they get in control, they don't make many mistakes from there. Main thing here, stay heavy. These balls cut easy. You can use a little bit of the side rail here on the one. The miss here is really the overcut. Yeah, there, he stayed actually very heavy on it, but smart and a little experience shown. Oki just got a huge break on the next table. A miss that you wouldn't see from the Polish player once a year, maybe. And Loho Sum looks very comfortable after a nice rack in the, in the fourth game. Hones his skills at the Hong Kong Sports Institute. The head snooker coach there is one Wayne Griffiths, who's the, the son of Terry Griffiths, who won the World Championship in 1979. And there's a really interesting story, actually, around funding in Hong Kong, China. Currently, it's a tier A sport, so they get funding alongside 19 other elite sports in that country. But there's talk, there was a story actually before he went to the World Masters in Gibraltar in the South China Morning Post, which is the, the big English language newspaper there, that maybe the sport is going to face demotion to tier B status. 
because the billiard sports have been dropped from three consecutive Asian games, although they are back in the Asian games, thankfully, in 2030 in Doha in Qatar. And there's some interesting quotes from Lo, actually. He said, I believe billiard sports are truly devalued. And if it is the case that we fall to tier B, his future might be up in the air. Yeah, so many countries. Uh, it's so, so awesome that governments get involved and whatnot, but it also plays a huge role in these players' success and really what they can do. You know, they have to live, right? So financially, it can be a burden without that assistance. And we've talked already, haven't we, in passing about the fact that Poland have got so many great players. We know that Holland have. Now, there's no coincidence there. They receive a lot of government help to promote the game of pool in that country. So if the tier B funding does come in in Hong Kong, China, clearly that's a detriment to the sport there. Although I will say this, maybe subconsciously it's providing a motivation for Lo Ho Sum to show what he's capable of. Yeah, we all know in those countries, always looking for champions in all kinds of sports to represent and it goes a long ways as far as, you know, keeping the interest and, and uh, motivation by those, those governments and those federations to keep the assistance up. It's just great for the sport as well. Well, they've clearly got a, a good in, in him. There's no doubt about that. And I remember a few years ago in the World Cup of Pool, there were a couple fine young players from China, Hong Kong. So, and if neither one of them were Loho Sum. So I think there's some other players that you may be seeing as long as they keep that tier that they're at now. You know, another young player from China, Hong Kong is Robbie Capito, who's here still battling away. And it's awesome that he was able to make the event. It looked a little suspect there just uh, a week or so prior. And he's really tuned in the break, the one really kind of dressing up in the same position, holding the cue ball nicely. And I think he's got another playable one ball, maybe. I don't know, maybe not. I'll tell you, though, if he can cut this in, I think it's a shot you want to shoot at. Otherwise, he would shave the right side of the one, maybe running the cue ball a few rails using the six and the eight as a snooker. Don't think the cross corner bank is much of a, a great play. Just you're not going to make it that often the way you have to shoot it for position on the two. All right, he's going to play the safety pretty smart. I think he got there. Yes, he did. So Mickey Krause, after a few early mistakes, comes to the table on rack number six. Kick he should always hit, really, but we'll see how he plays it. Come two rails underneath, trying to hold the cue ball. You can come two rails across it, trying to run the cue ball. That offers a little bit more make on the one. Medium high ball, I think he's trying to come underneath it. Oh, he's made it. And now a decision, I think he probably plays safe on the two, but a nice hit on the one. He's gotten himself in position now to keep control here in rack number six. That's where you pay attention to your opponent's shot. You follow that same path that he just banged the two around. You're going to have to come three rails, I believe anyways. Yeah, three rails on the same path that Mickey knocked the two away. Yeah, two rails is very difficult. Three rails offers a lot of action. He's going to go two rails away. And the problem with this is you're not kicking towards congestion. You're kicking to where the two and the cue bar are going to follow each other up that table. If 
he hits the left side, it could scratch as well. He, he'd be satisfied just contacting the two, though, and what a nice, solid hit that was. Wow. And he may have made it. Well, he deserved more than that. Touchy little rail first shot here, just coming across for the three. Got to kind of ease it, that way the cue ball doesn't kind of poke a little bit. And Mickey's looked very comfortable with uh, position play and and really, you know, kind of commanding this slick table. It's just been pocketing a few balls, the six ball mainly. It's cost him a few games. He's got a little angle here. He could come out for the six in the lower right corner or the side. I wouldn't add English trying to get for the side here. If I could, if I'd take a little cut shot on the six in the side, that's fine. But this five ball, you want to pay attention to it, make it as easy as possible. And for Kraus, this is much needed. And the bane of his life in this match so far has been the six ball, but I can't imagine this one is going to go astray. No, I think he would have to pretty much faint not to make this six ball. Now you could be always trying to get back on the board. Yes, Oi now trails Marius Skonecki, 5-3. The nine ball here for Kraus to cut his deficit to 4-2. No alarms. The Great Dane looking a little better. And of course he gets to break off in rack seven. Yeah, these are stressful tournaments, of course. The bigger, the better. And the first inaugural UK Open, but so much uh, at, at stake in each one of these matchroom nine ball events. Uh, now look at a guy like Naoki Oi, who isn't even gonna be involved in the Moscone Cup, of course, being from Japan, but you know, there's a lot to look forward to in 2023. And I kind of just see him to where he plays with a little more stress than he used to with those expectations. I think he, uh, he now holds. I could not agree more. I thought during the World Masters in particular, he seemed really tentative and uptight right from the get-go. He didn't have the best of fortune either, one has to say, but he, he doesn't seem the kind of free, effervescent player he once was. Yeah, even the walk around the table, I think, uh, played with a lot of confidence. And, and you know, I, I don't even know if I can figure out the word for Naoki Oi. It's a, it's a hybrid of confidence and enjoyment while he's at the table that that you do see at times from players, but he almost always had that. And I think he'll get that back. He just needs a, needs probably a, a nice result here in 2022 or two that he wants. And uh, we'll get the same old fun loving player from Japan that we all really enjoy watching. So now he's got the break back, and he wants to keep it. Yeah, we haven't seen many from that side of the table overall, at least in day one. Most of the players broke from the other side. Looks like results are available from both side rails. I think Alvin Ocean is the only one I recall breaking from that side, at least when I was in the box yesterday. 
Okay, he's got to thin the one, it looks like, trying to use the six and eight. When you're this close to it, you sh really should control the object ball pretty well. You don't have to go all the way back down the table with the cue ball. This is where getting the snooker is super key. Now he could play the one into the rail, trying to use the eight to hold the one and run the cue ball behind the seven and two. I personally like just the thinning on the one myself. I'm not sure what he's doing now. Oh, he banked it away. This is going to work out pretty well, though. One guarantee he had there is speed control on the object ball should be pretty good when you're that close to it, and he's always holding the cue ball on the top rail. So a lot of value in that shot. And the one thing after making some mistakes, Phil, that was about the most simple play he had. Yeah, often when you're struggling, simplicity is your best friend. Yeah, well, I quite often struggle on the golf course, so I tell myself, get the ball on the ground as quick as possible. Jeremy Jones, not Bobby Jones. Yeah, no relation at all. Oh, nice kick shot there. A little fortunate to get up on the seven, but he played the percentages, and I think he may have snookered Mickey. And those nuanced little rolls make so much difference. Yeah, when you make mistakes, you kind of got to fight your way out of it a lot of times. Your opponent's going to get a little bit of the breaks, you might say, but frustration is the thing you can't let set in. Now, I don't know if I want to try and kick this in the corner. That upper right hand corner, I think if he does that, maybe a draw stroke because if he goes with a high ball, that scratch in the upper left, very available. He could easily kick and kind of stick, but the, I think the one may run into the eight. Slick table. Oh, he's gonna get that scratch anyways in a very unfortunate manner. And the gesticulation with the hand was one of pure resignation. Why me? Okay, some work here. I mean, the first four balls, you know, minus simple position on the two, as long as he keeps that simple position. But after that, then the rack, he's got to go from the six to the seven, back up for the eight. Oh, and he's left himself way more cut shot than he wanted. This is a tester and kind of from nowhere. Now, on the overhead shot, as the the blue two ball was going towards the pocket. I think some of you might have thought it wasn't going in. It might not have done on those four inch pockets in Gibraltar, but it certainly scooped in there. Yeah, and really, you know, the outer tables will play a little more difficult, actually, as far as the pocket is concerned, uh, than the main tables, just a little more lighting with the cameras and whatnot. So even here in a day or two, that ball may not fall. Yes, we got this at snooker tournament as well, Jeremy, on the, the first day. The pockets do tend to play a little easier than they would towards the end of the week before the table is, is recovered. Okay, this is kind of crucial. Six in the middle of the table, so you don't want to get too too much cut. You could offer a scratch maybe, and really getting from the seven to the eight later is key. And we talk about that, getting on the six is essential. Very latest from table two, Marius Skonecki has just taken a 6-3 lead over Naoki Oi. Oi in danger of being sent to the, the loser's side. 
Man, I'll tell you one thing that saw happen at the Whirlpool Masters, which I personally love in a player, is keeping it simple. And I think that's that's a big benefit for Loho Sum and something that's going to be a real asset as he moves further, not only in this rack and this match, but just period. And it looks like he's got to draw this, so maybe he doesn't get too close. I don't know if I draw this. This is some angle, and you don't want to be you know, past the head string shooting the seven, trying to get back to the eight. I think I'd rather have more angle on the seven, more of a cut shot and be a little closer. So I think a high ball here. Dropped in no man's land. Yeah, and he just overran. He knew he was going to accept more angle. He just overran it maybe six or eight inches. Makes a world of difference on this shot. Now here he's he's just got to put a little bit of left English and understand that he's probably going to have to cut the eight from above the head string and probably in the upper left-hand corner. At least that's what it looks like to me. He's to catch this one thick. Yeah, just like that. And what happens is you put a little too much speed. The ball deflects a little bit with that left English. Very easy to swerve into it and catch the seven very heavy. Didn't expect that heavy, though. Yeah, it was nowhere in the vicinity of the pocket. The, the cue ball was closer, actually, and that's given Kraus somewhat awkward bridging over this pocket. So this isn't a certainty. Now watch out for the scratch where he's standing. That looks very possible. Wow, that's a sweet stroke, and he's really looked good on the tough shots. I feel it's been really the easy ones that have gotten him. Yeah, most notably the two six balls he missed early doors. And quite light on position there. And it's and not taking much time here either. Mickey Krause is back within one. Loho Sum's lead reduced to 4-3. Now, as I said, around this arena, we've got matches going on on the losers and the winners side. In the second round, for the winners, matches underway. Dennis Grabber and Jan Ramper from Holland. Grabber, of course, from Estonia. They're one each. Tobias Bongers from Germany. He leads David DeSantis. 3-0. 24 tables in operation at this copper box. It was such a busy day yesterday. We had 160 matches, and it's going to be equally hectic today, Jeremy. Yeah, like I was talking about earlier, really for the top, top guys, of course, minus Ruiz from yesterday. He almost fell out of this UK Open on day one, and the tournament really starts today. Those seeds earn those you know, what you would say easier matches, but nine ball pool, you know, you can't look past anyone, especially because it doesn't take much even for the top guys to lose a little focus and uh, make some mistakes themselves. So the immediate priority for Mickey Krause, trying to get back onto level terms for the first time since 1-1. from the looks of things here he's going to love this break off really unloading on the rack and I'll tell you we've seen a few simple ones here in the first day and change of the tournament but this may be as easy as it gets two ball foot away three ball over the pocket the five easy the six over the side so as far as settling yourself and like you said trying to level this match I think this this gets as easy as it as, as possible for Mickey Krause. All of the, the terminology in pool, Jeremy, and I don't use this too often because it does tend to be repeated time and time again, but I suppose you could say this is, well, 
almost a roadmap. Yeah, I mean, I think at times us in the booth can kind of take away how difficult the game is, but at this level, yeah, this is about picture perfect. You really don't have to move the cue ball much, not really too much worry on pocketing a ball. But yeah, this is as good as it gets or as easy as it gets in nine ball pool. So let's get in the mind of the US Moscone Cup captain and former US Open champion. When you're in a, a big tournament and you're on the hill and you break off and the balls work out perfectly, that must be a great feeling knowing that you've got them all there. Yeah, and I th one thing I remind myself, because I made many mistakes um, in that last break off is, you know, hey, don't just stay away from telling yourself something that might change what you've been doing. I used to say, well, it's your last break, don't scratch. Then I'd let up on the break, didn't get quite the results on the one or the cue ball, maybe even scratch. So my main thing with that last break is stick to what you've been doing, and it's always nice if they settle like this. And I, I don't know if you've noticed, but not much of a pause on most of the shots in this rack, and I like that myself. I think the pause in the back to me is just really, when nerves are high, it can cause a bit of uh, timing issues. Well, that was pretty good timing from Mickey Kraus. Break and run out to tie the scores at 4-4. Interesting what you say there, you know, about the pause in the backswing. I think it was really noticeable Funnily enough, in a match involving Loho Sum at the Whirlpool Masters when he took on Abdullah Al Yusuf, the pause of Al Yusuf became seemingly lengthier and lengthier. At one point, we were wondering whether the pause was going to be greater than the 30 second shot clock. <laughs> yeah. Well, what happens is when nerves run high, you get a little quick. So the quicker the backswing, you'll pause a little longer, usually almost. I kind of suck, you know, kind of use it as a hate to say like a band-aid where you're trying to save a, a little bit of a quick backswing coming forward but certain shots I guess you, you could there's some merit in it but the difference is what people don't realize is we spin the ball a lot and uh, if you're talking about controlling the swerve of the ball with the timing it seems like to me a free-flowing swing back and forth just does that a little bit better in my opinion anyways where people compare pool to snooker so much and talk about technique, where the snooker players aren't trying to swerve the ball near as many shots as we do. And when I say swerve, I don't mean like a mass A, I just mean side spin. I'll tell you, definitely no road map. He's got a much longer shot on the one. But you can see the first four balls really lead towards the six ball up in the corner where he's going to have to work the ball later to get on the seven. But Mickey really should take his first lead. And that's right, the story of the match so far. If you're just joining us on Matchroom Live or on the Matchroom Pool Facebook page, the story of the match so far, well, Loho Sun won the opening rack, Kraus equalised, then Loho Sun went 4-1 ahead, and you thought the, the Whirlpool Masters runner-up might well take control. That's not been the case. template used here early in the UK Open. We've seen some variety and as the tables break in again a little bit, you know, guys are going to continually still make balls. That's just what the template offers and that's how great these players are, but still you'll see a little more change as the table as the table gets more broken and of course a few more misses. So this is an interesting in interesting shot with inside English. To really hit your mark, you kind of got to ease the ball around the table. Yeah, that's what happens when you overhit it. I don't know if that's going to get there. It kind of just stalls a little bit. 
And you have to understand that table. You take a little speed off, actually, you get more out of it. Which I thought was really noticeable yesterday when Joshua Filler played. He was playing some shots that seemingly were really quiet, but he was getting maximum effect with the cue ball. Yeah. I always tell people you can on these tables you swing it 30 percent and you get 100 percent out of it. You you heighten that speed, you actually lose a little bit of power. Pretty nice kick shot here, though. And especially if you're a little heavy on the six, like he could have used a little bit thinner, which would have helped running the cue ball a little further. And I don't know if anyone else is watching, but now you always got to get it going. And it's just been struggle after struggle. He's at the table, but he just snookered himself on the three, trailing eight to three. Yes, if you want to see the table two stream all day, it's available for you on the, the Matchroom YouTube channel. Oh, that was almost picture perfect. And Loho Sum went for the attacking safety and just missed it by just an inch or two, really. Another shot that's a little funny if you're trying to come all the way back down the right side of the table. If you overhit it, the ball hug a little bit, maybe dive towards the side pocket. Kind of, kind of smooth this one down as well. What I always tell people is you have to trust the speed of the bed getting you there versus more of forcing it around. And that just comes with experience, Phil. Kraus, though, very much on the comeback trail here. 4-1 down at his lowest ebb. Now, the young man from Denmark leads Loho Sum 5-4. On table two, Marius Skonecki is on the hill against Naokioid 8-3, although he's just missed the, the four ball with a really good chance to run out, Jeremy. Yeah, and Marius has played a pretty solid match, but the biggest problem for this match for Naokioid is... Of course, the scoreline, that's the biggest problem at the moment, but he's had a lot of chances. I've been keeping a, an eye on that match just because I, I really like Oi and I love watching him play. And, but he's had a ton of opportunities here early and just struggled with the safety, struggled with some position, a few misses, and now a tough cue ball as well over the seven and, and really uh, threatening his first loss in the tournament. We saw some extraordinary comebacks in the World Championship, <clears throat> won by the eventual winner, Shane Van Boning. So this is not irretrievable, but he can't afford any more mistakes. Yeah, and in the last year or so, he's made some of those big comebacks and big events. So we'll see, that was a super nice stroke there from Naoki Oi, just kind of smoothed that five in, and maybe he can get himself started here. Winter break format. All right, Mickey's broke the balls well again. He's got a shot on the one. The three's a little covered up with the two falling. So good thing is he's got an angle, I think, to come a few rails and maybe get that cut shot on the three. Could use a little more angle on the one, but it is doable. You said Naoki Oi didn't didn't have his best pro Whirlpool Masters and then he went on to Bucharest and I didn't get to see him play but I saw his post and wasn't too happy with his play there either it seemed so but for the the extrovert Japanese hope springs eternal he did win rack 12 so 8-4 down he could yet pull this out of the fire now that was a, a fine shot just stunning the cue ball in behind the six. And yeah. suddenly Loho Sum is finding it tough going. Yeah, and I think he cut off that left side rail. And if he did so, he may have cut off the right side rail. Also, the two rail kick, maybe the eights in a way, just partially. Yeah, 
this is difficult. He may go three rails past the five to the right side rail and see where he's laid his cue there. The problem with this, if you're off just a, you know, just a bit on the slick table, this ball dived to the top rail and not hit the three at all. And also the problem with this kind of kick shot is you usually don't get a ton of speed on the object ball if you do hit it. Yeah, he went into the five, and he almost had to threaten going into the five to get that contact on the three. And now Mickey in a great spot. Gonna work this cue ball quite some distance playing the three in the side here. He's gotta go across the table. He's yeah, I don't know if that's enough there, and that's I mean I guess you're gonna go three rails around the six. This is a huge mistake with ball in hand, and unless he intended to get here, which I don't think that's normally would be the case. Because now you're contending with the six and the eight to get on the five. This is if he hits any high ball at all, I don't like it. He's got to hit it like center ball. And there's that eight ball I was talking about, Phil. Yeah, that was a terrible error from ball in hand. It really was. And a touchy little safety is here as well. A lot of openings, a lot of gaps. Just coming kind of straight on the back side of the eight here. All touch. And it's going to be light. Fortunate for him, he's tied the five and the six up, I believe. Naoki Oy, I, I would have to bet, putting his first break and run of the match together over there. So he's hanging in there. Watch out side pocket here with the cue ball on the left. Oh, he's hitting it light. This is kind of too mild of a safety. He was trying to get behind the nine. How does Mickey take on the cross side bank? I kind of like the looks of it myself. Just a, a containing safety from Loho Sun, but playing a shot like that, you're basically delaying your problems. And just a center ball stun for the cross side bank. Yeah, nice shot. And maybe a little bit of a difference. I uh, talked about earlier, Mickey spending a lot of time in America playing a lot of different disciplines, one pocket and bank pool, definitely two of them. So the attempted containment from Loho Sum didn't work. The bank from Mickey Kraus most certainly did. But that shot was not his best. Now and again, just seems a little quick. You'll see the heavy pause when the backswing gets a little quicker. And definitely saw it there. Well, that is five racks in succession for the young Dane, Mickey Krause, having been 4-1 adrift, now leads Loho Sum in a real turnaround, 6-4. Maybe a massive turnaround in the off thing on table two because Naoki Oi was 8-3 down to Marius Skonecki. Now it's 8-5. And, of course, he's breaking in rack 14. Other scores for you from the winner's side. Pius Labutis from Lithuania leading Ruben Alves from Portugal, 4-2. Estonia's Dennis Graber, fine player. He's 3-2 down against Jan Ramper from Holland. 
Demetrius Lukatos and Juan Carlos Exposito. They're one, fr uh, one frame each. And I know that Thomas Kaplan had made a really good start to his match. A, a terrific Polish player who's capable of beating anyone. And Kraus has broke the balls very well. Not backing off much at all. Uh, cue ball is going to fall on him a little bit. So with the one over the pocket, this is going to become tough. He's hoping the two stays tied up, but that's not the case. And he's got to go to the air here, Phil. I don't even think he can roll out to a jump shot unless he rolls out to a tougher one, which I don't see that happening. Aoki Oi is broken. He has a reasonable shot on the two to get himself started in what will be rack number 14. This type of shot here requires a very accurate strike on the cue ball. You got to get it up quickly so that more angle on the cue stick. Any miss it, he'll swerve the cue ball and probably miss the one. And that's just the way it was. And I'll tell you what, even though he's gone to the right a little bit, he may have a kiss shot on the eight. I know he wanted to hold his ball or maybe even hit the left side of the one, but that's where he probably hit a little bit of left English and kind of deflected a little bit. But I think the eight's playable. And it's probably as good a shot as he has. You have to hit it with a little speed and maybe a hair right English. But you can see this rack is a little tricky with the four near the side on the side rail, the seven opposite. Key to this shot is don't baby it. You need a little bounce off the two to get to that edge on the eight. Now you hit it sweet. Yeah, using every bit of the pocket on the eight ball, but I think that was kind of required. Now here, this is a shot you just shoot with some confidence a little high inside going between the three and the four I believe I think one rail goes into the nine maybe oh he did go into the nine so look at this he may get some real fortune oh the nine carrying past the three so still has to play for the run out you can't blame him there kind of simplifying the shot on the two I don't think he really knew exactly where he was going to come off that nine, but. And now Okioi with a, a break and run, another break and run. Yeah, I just had the feeling when Skonecki missed that four ball, it might all turn around. Like I said, I was watching a lot and always had a lot of chances. Huge shot here. Okay. Use two cushions back and forth. Medium speed. And a confident stroke. He's going to need an angle to get on the seven. Not much of an angle there, Phil. This rack's far from over. And stress on the face of Mickey Krause, that's for sure. I'm not sure what he does here. I, I know this sounds crazy, but I sure hate to go for a six ball that really doesn't offer any guaranteed position on the slick table. I may hold this ball and bank the seven cross corner. I know that sounds crazy, but and swing the cue ball. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the percentage play is here. You could cross the six over and run the cue ball. That's a good shot. Put the six on the back on the bottom round the cue ball up table. But if you try to warp this in with a, a high ball, you could hit it perfect and really still not get position. Oh, he went for the long rail bank, which is an option down the road for me. And that's kind of what I meant, Phil. Well, you used the word percentage play, Jeremy, whether you agree with that shot or not. 
you couldn't possibly argue that was the percentage play. It was the extravagant shot. It was the, the bold shot, but not the percentage shot. The only good thing I liked about that shot is if you did bury it, you know, you were going to get position on the seven of some sort, but I think maybe Mickey's ability got the best of him there. Some who hasn't pocketed many balls in a few racks. Big shot here on the seven. Sighting-wise, with that far jaw of the middle pocket in his thoughts, that was a pretty good shot, and it was one he so desperately required. Loho Sum back within one. Mickey Krause's lead reduced to 6-5. All about that extravagant, crowd-pleasing, had it gone in, six-ball bank length of the table. Plenty of pool going on here in this winner's side round. Thomas Kaplan from Poland, 5-2 up on Jamil Jacobs from South Africa. Tobias Bongas, 5-1 up on David DeSantis. Petri Makinen, former World Cup winner from Finland. He's 3-1 up on John McAllister, fine English eight-ball player. Jan van Leerup, 7-3 up on Jamie Mocock. So two racks away from victory. Billy Thorpe, who you know well, Jeremy, he's 3-1 up against Vincent Bermendi from Scotland. And John Mora, great player from Canada, hasn't lost a rack in the tournament yet. He beat Davidas Dagula 9-0 in the first round yesterday, and he's 6-0 up on Adam Stevens as I speak. You know, John's another one that's looking for that big, big title. He's won a, some big titles, of course, but you know, there's still just one level higher that he's looking for, and I kind of expect him to get it. Now, it's snookered here, and that hasn't happened much to Loho some in the last few months off the break shot. Another guy that's grinding it out on the next table, Naoki Oi, trying to put another break and run together. I think there's been a few questionable rollouts from some at times, but again, you, just, you usually want to pass on rolling out on the offensive end. Is he trying to bank the seven on the two maybe here and bringing the cue ball up table? A lot of, lot of th things going on with this shot, so you don't want to lose control of the cue ball, and you certainly don't want to snooker yourself. So I understand where he was going with the seven, but you don't want to lose control. Maybe he's left a little piece of the one, so that's not so bad. The Oi comeback gathers momentum. He was 8-3 down. Now it's 8-7 to Skonecki. And, of course, with the winner breaks format, Oi breaks off in rack 16. That could be a great escape. Yeah, and after that mistake from his opponent, he's put three racks together, and it's been a little struggle each rack. Again, I'm keeping one eye on that match, and but he's kind of getting through it, settling in a little more. So this is thin. He's got to get by the nine and the six with the cue ball and still try to control the one. So nothing easy here. Friendly little kiss on the cue ball there. Pretty good effort overall. Billy Thorpe, who I spoke with him yesterday, and he's been putting a lot of time in and you know, had a spell where he was off from pool and, you know, equipment change and a lot of things going on. So, but he's, he likes the direction he's heading in. He's seems very settled here. Like he's just appreciating the moment. He broke and ran seven racks in his first match. So the ability's there. He's just got to settle the brain a little bit, put some time in. And I think you're going to see a better Billy Thorpe moving forward. Now 
Now this is a touchy. You just try to probably play the one lightly, maybe bring the cue ball up on the nine. See if you, it's a bonus if you get up on the nine with the cue ball. He's let this a hair tricky. Loho, some can cut the one with inside English trying to crawl the cue ball up the table or he can come back behind the nine as well. Can he bank this away? Thought the seven was maybe in a problem. No, he can bank this away. I may have shoved the cue ball into the seven two there as well trying to open those a little bit because without that, first off, you figure Mickey to hit the one and also the two's going to stay tied up. Oh, I wouldn't jump at this. You got to recognize the two's tied up here. You can't take a chance. You're supposed to hit this one. This is a pretty easy kick shot for these guys. Naoki Oi, who's gotten snookered off the break in rack 16. So we're going to see Marius with uh, at least an opportunity to make a decision in this rack. Should be a push out there. This should be a mild kick. No reason to kick hard and lose accuracy. Hit it sweet, though. Got a lot of run on the cue ball. There's no way he can be displeased with that. No, I mean, he's put a lot of pressure on, on Loho Sum here to make a decision. Um... You know, if he attacks, he's got to put a little something into it to make sure he gets at the two. And that makes it a missable ball. I might go cross corner here. I might be aggressive trying to make the bank and break out the two and the seven. I know that sounds crazy, but it lays pretty nice. That's probably a pretty smart shot. I think this is just the kind of match we anticipated. Keenly contested not much to choose between them I think Mickey probably tries to pocket the one here keep it simple there is no position on the two other than a safety position wow he's coming to break it out maybe or just to get across for a better safety don't think he can put him behind the seven from this position, so it's all about ball control on the two. Oh, he still hasn't made that rollout decision in such an important game. Trying to make a big comeback. Maybe he can get him behind the seven here lightly. Oh, wow, he could pocket the two. Wow. That camera will fool you, Phil. Well, if it's any consolation, Jeremy, and it won't be, but I was completely with you. I didn't see that being available. Yeah, and on those shallow angles, you can use the rail a bit, but I didn't, still didn't think that was a pocketable ball. But you notice where he played the cue ball behind the seven as well. So this would be some out here, and Loho some probably didn't figure the two was playable either. Six ball, a little shaky again, going to the pocket. If you've missed a ball, the same ball a couple of times, does it become a little psychological thinking about it? Yeah, in a funny manner, I would say it's, I mean, if someone asked you, you know, face to face, you might say no, for sure not, you know, something to talk about, of course, or we always say, oh, that pocket got me again, but realistically, it's just a, uh, it's just something to discuss. It's not really, in my opinion anyways, too mental. Now, if you get on a really exceptionally tight table, it can become very mental. We see it all the time in golf. They get on the tight fairways for some reason. It becomes hard to hit it. Yeah, and it was pretty hard for Mickey Krause in the early stages of this match. He was 4-1 down. Now, though, what a transformation. 
the young man from Denmark leads Loho Sum from Hong Kong, China. 7-5, two more required for progress. We have just seen Naoki Oi kicking out of a, a snooker on the one in the 16th rack. He hit the one but went in off scratched. And so Marius Skonecki has got the opportunity here and it's a golden opportunity as well to win by nine racks to seven. That match has indeed all of the action on table two today is available for you on the Matchroom Pool YouTube channel. Do have one result from this winner's round so far. Jan van Leerup from Holland has beaten GB's Jamie Mocock 9-3. I was going to say it looked like he was going to love this break off the one near the cue ball. And I'll tell you, not quite as easy a layout as we saw earlier in the match for, for Mickey. But huh, the way the starter is on the one, the two's there, the three's over the side, the four near. And he should get to the heel. Well, he's gotten a little bit, a little, little funny on the two, but just got to pay attention. let up from the our Polish contingent here so a bit of a nine ball shot to give Oy his first loss yes over on table two this is the ball that will get Skonecki through yes he has defeated Naoki Oy by nine racks to seven and so Oy is consigned to the the loser side of the draw prime position now for Mickey Krause I think he just holds his ball here on the on the four takes a little cut shot on the five no reason to play short side on the six seven I don't think on the six ball just play the six seven combo I guess he's so close to the five he can really make that decision but the six seven I think is pretty um, worry free So he's just got to float this and got to be a little careful of containing the six. I don't think he wants to try and make them both. Some players would play with a little more speed at times. Didn't get the hit on the, on the six ball he wanted there. Now resting near the rail. Much more difficult shot on the nine than expected. That was so sweet. It was a, a pressurized shot. He created the pressure himself with his poor positional shot onto the nine. But that showed a lot of character and, Jeremy, a lot of nerve. Yeah, especially recognizing he made a, a technique mistake on the ball before. And that was a missable ball, no matter if, you know, if you're happy with the shot prior or not. And so mentally and physically much more solid here towards the end of this match for Mickey and Loho Sum, who's now lost seven out of eight after up four to one here early in this match. Yeah, Mickey Krauss with that really good nine ball on the hill. He's not going to back off. Square and firm on the break. 
a lot of travel on the one. Unfortunate kiss on the cue ball. It seemed like it was in the center of the table. And I don't know if he's got a cuttable one bar or not. It looks awfully thin into the side. The six covers up the corner. I don't know if we've had anybody make the one travel that far, though, around the table. Boy, this looks thin. Now, he can roll the one, even though it's a nervy shot, trying to put the cue ball in the back of the green six. I wonder if there's any flirt of going by the six and scratching in that corner. I don't think so if he cuts the one, but he's got to catch a piece of the six, you would figure. He did just that, and an awful, the second kiss on the cue ball. The good thing for Mickey is the threes over the side, so really just pocketing the two will get the job done and probably get this match done as well if he buries his two ball. You can actually see him growing in confidence. And I think the ball that epitomized Krause's comeback here was the nine in the previous rack. He put himself in that bind, and yet he, he stroked it in with great aplomb, and now you really can't see him missing. No, just keep the cue ball off the rail. No, don't get too thin. You can certainly work the cue ball many ways from the six to the seven. You can see the eight near the nine. So again, don't get and too much of a missable ball that's not really required to play position throughout the rest of the rack. And can he not just draw the cue ball to the side rail here? Is he flirting with the side pocket? I thought he could easily draw. Yeah, he can easily draw this ball to the left side rail. He's got plenty of plenty of angle to where he's not flirting with the side. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. 50 yard line at best. And that now he makes position, not only pocketing the six, and I'm not sure where he was going there, Phil. It seemed like to me it was a pretty light draw stroke to get in better position for the lower right corner. Yeah, that evil six balls down. Yeah, there's a, a golf course in Scottsdale, Arizona, where the, the last six holes are very difficult. Sunridge Canyon they call it the wicked six and the six was wicked for Mickey Krause early on but now he's in full stride a little bit of a decision here got to make sure he doesn't come across near this right side pocket easy to let up on this kind of shot and that's what I was worried about right there he was trying to come all the way across and then you can worry about that side and just let up on the swing a little bit. And that's the second time he's knocked in a nine ball like that. That thin cut into a blind pocket. And on this occasion, it is the decisive blow. That was quite a comeback from Mickey Krause. It must be remembered at his worst, he was 4-1 down to Loho Sum, the recent runner-up in the Whirlpool Masters. But in the end, Kraus wins by nine racks to five. He now awaits in the next round either Jason Shaw or Stephen Follen. And he will have a lengthy wait because Shaw and Follen will play the sixth and last streaming match here on Table One today.